Amazing. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, this is for Powerful Alerting Workflows. Um, I'm going to be your host, Jamie. Um, we're going to be looking at four different workflows that you can use uh, for alerting that you can implement into your own workflow. Uh, today, I'm excited to be joined by our two, two guests. Uh, Zhang Li, she's a VP of product here at Raygun. Uh, she's got many years of product management experience. She's been one of the major driving forces behind the implementation of alerting. Uh, she can give you some business-minded in insight into alerting, as well as some examples of how current customers are getting value out of it. And our other speaker is Ollie Bannister. He's an engineering team lead here at Raygun. He and his team have been responsible for the development of alerting, solving all of the technical hurdles that came with this development. As such, he's going to be a go-to for any technical questions that you might have during this chat. Speaking of questions, we would like this to be an interactive session. So please use the Q&A feature or the chat, uh, chat function um, and we'll dedicate some time at the end of the session um, to answer any of those questions. Um, let's have a quick jump into the agenda, shall we? Cool. So first thing we're going to go through is things going to walk us through the basics of alerting, uh, looking at why it was created and how it's created. Um, then we're going to walk through the four main alert examples. Um, then after we walk through this alert examples, we'll show you how you can actually use Raygun to take action after you get one of these alerts. Then we'll have a little look into the future of alerting, see what's next, and then finally we'll jump into the Q&A at the end. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for coming along today. Um, but before we jump, jump into the content itself, I'd like to run a quick, uh, quick poll um, just to gauge where everybody's at with alerting so far. So I'll just pull that up now. Um, there you go. So the first question, uh, we'd like to see where everybody is at with alerting so far. So option one, is that you actively use alerting. Option two is that you've tried alerting, but you don't actively use it. Number three is that you understand alerting, but haven't yet created an alert. And number four is that you're still learning about alerting. We also have a second question for all of those who have tried creating an alert so far. Um, and that is, what is the most common type of alert that you've created? Um, so is it a new error group occurs, error group occurs, error group reoccurs, error instance occurs, page slash XHR performance change, or you don't know, so you haven't used it yet. Just give that a few more seconds for some answers to trickle on in. Thank you very much to everyone who's, who's given an answer so far. Awesome, I think that's about perfect. Great, so it seems like quite a few people are still in the discovery phase of alerting. That's great, that's perfect. Um, that's, we're gonna be going through some of the, some of the basics today, so that will be, be great. Um, and it actually looks like it's split pretty evenly across the board as well in terms of the alert types that have been created. Um, and quite a few of you haven't actually created one yet. So this is going to be a perfect opportunity for you to be able to get up to speed and create one for yourself. Amazing. Well, I won't take any more of your time. Um, I'll pass it on to, uh, to the lovely Zhang. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie. So what is alerting? So alerting is Raygun's way to notify you of the errors, crashes, and front-end performance issues that matters the most to you and your team. So the main reason why we built alerting was that with our old notification system, the feedback from you, our customers, was that you were getting too many emails despite our best effort to roll up the alerts. And over time, it meant that some of you have become sort of desensitized to Raygun alerts that land into your inbox and you needed help differentiating important um, signals from noise. So we built alerting to help reduce that um, noise to uh, signal ratio by letting you customize what you wanna hear about rather than what we think you should hear about, which means putting the power in your hands about the issues that matters to you. This new alerting system was also built with a tech team and an organization in mind. This means that uh, team members can now administer alerts for other team members or for the whole company. And that organizations with a lot of applications will benefit from creating and maintaining one alert that can be applied across most or all of your applications, rather than having 50 different alerts for 50 different applications. And lastly, it does give you more granular control over when and exactly what you want to hear about from Raygun through the use of thresholds, tags and versions, not just whenever errors or performance issues occur. So as you can see with this new alerting system, it is built in a very flexible way and you can do a lot with it to suit your use case. And today we're gonna to take a look at the four most powerful alerts that we've observed from our customers. And for that, I'll hand you over to Ali to run through some examples. Thanks, Sing. For our first example today, we're gonna to take a look at the new error group occurs condition 
as well as run you through how to create an alert inside of Raygun. This condition will alert you when a new error has been introduced into your application. It allows for prompt investigation to be completed <laughs> into the issue to help identify risk and implement a resolution plan. The issue may require immediate resolution in the form of a hotfix, planned resolution in the form of a bug fix, or perhaps it can be ignored or permanently ignored if the problem is out of your control. To get this set up, let's, let's take a look at how to configure this inside a Raygun and create our first alert. You can navigate to alerting inside the application by either clicking on alerting at the top of the page, or you can also find a link to alerting in the side navigation for both crash reporting and run. Here you'll be presented with the alerting overview screen. From this view, you can see all the alerts that have been created for your plan, including alerts created by other team members. It's easy to see at a glance what alerts you've been subscribed to and can make use of the toggle feature to allow you to narrow down the results. Creating our first alert is easy. Simply click the Create Alert button at the top right corner to get started. Here you'll be presented with all the configuration options for an alert. The first step is naming an alert. The alert name will be included in the alert's email subject body, so it's a good idea to come up with a good naming convention when setting up an alert. If a good naming convention is followed, it can help you distinguish them inside your inbox and understand the context of an alert at a glance. Some possible categories worth considering would be application. What applications is the alert for? Severity. Is the alert configured to monitor high or low impact issues? Conditions. Under what conditions will the alert trigger on? Environment. Is the alert monitoring production or beta environments? Language. What programming language or framework does the alert monitor? As this is a free text field, it's worth coming up with a strategy that will make sense for your plan and use case. And remember, if you're, always, if you're unsure what to name it, you can always configure the alert first and choose something that makes sense based off the configuration. For this alert, I'll set my alert name to checkout flow prod, and we're going to have the error name new error detected. The next step is to select the applications that you want your alert to target. This can be one or multiple, depending on your needs. For this example, I'll choose the Checkout Flow Prod application. Now we can select the condition that we want our alert to trigger on. In this example, we'll select the new error group occurs condition. If desired, you have the option to set a threshold for this condition by checking the checkbox. This could be useful to help reduce noise if you're finding the alert to be too noisy. Now we have our condition, we can set the recipients for our alert. Here you have the option to set yourself, but if desired, you could also subscribe other team members to your alert. For this example, I'm just gonna select myself and then click create alert. Awesome. And just like that, we've created our first alert. Zing, did you happen to have some custom use cases for an alert like this? Thank you for the demo, Ollie. That was very useful. So this is our most basic alert. Uh, you can consider it as a catch-all for when you want to know about errors you've never seen before or expecting. Um, this is most useful for monitoring critical systems such, such as APIs and key conversion pages such as this heat ray 5,000 page from Ronald Reagan's website, uh, because any new errors that you didn't know about in those critical areas could have a huge negative impact on your business or the user experience. So now that we've looked at this example, Ollie, what's our second example? Awesome. For our second alert, we're gonna take a look at the error instance occurs condition. This alert will alert you when one or more instances of an error occur within a given time interval. I can use this as an engineer to be notified as soon as Reagan detects error volumes that fall outside what I usually see on a day-to-day. -day. This can be useful to catch errors introduced by some bad looping logic, catching out a bad deployment, or even symptoms caused by an infrastructure issue. Whatever the case, catching and resolving runaway errors should be something that engineering teams strive to resolve to ensure good experiences for their customers. Let's head back over to Reagan and take a look how to get something like this set up. First, we'll create our new alert. 
Then we'll give our alert a name, making sure we follow the same naming convention that we decided on in our previous example. Here, I'm gonna set our alert name to checkout flow prod, influx and error volumes. Next, we can add the applications that we want our alert to target. Again, I would like to choose the checkout flow prod application. And then we can move on to our condition. For this example, I'll choose the error instance occurs condition. Next, we can set the volume and interval that is appropriate for our application needs. This can be found by heading over to crash reporting and taking a look at what a baseline means for your application. Here in Raygun, we can see our checkout flow prod crash reporting application. And if I mouse over the errors by hour graph, we can see that this application sees roughly 20 to 25 at its peak um, of errors per hour. Now, knowing this, we can use this information to then apply a good threshold to my alert. If I was to say we want this to trigger when 30 error instances occur within a 30 minute time window, that would mean something has really gone wrong based off what we saw in that crash reporting app. Finally, we can add our recipients and we can create our alert. For this, I'll select myself again and create alert. With the second alert all configured, Zing, did you happen to have some use cases where this alert would come in handy? Thanks, Ollie. So the error instance occurs alert is useful to keep an eye on any regular patterns, for example, for monitoring an increase of errors due to a deployment, uh, the checkout pages or load balances for any runaway issues that might be getting out of control. Sometimes a small issue can become a big problem if you don't deal with it fast enough. And this alert is great for time sensitive issues that you need to know about straight away. So Ollie, what's the next example, please? For a third example, we're gonna take a look at the error group occurs condition. This type of alert will notify you, notify you when specific types of error groups are triggered inside your application and can be paired with threshold conf configurations based on your needs. I find this type of alert to be awesome at monitoring specific high impact issues that I want to know about to ensure customers are getting the best experience through critical user journeys. Perhaps you want to know when there's a failure with your payment API, or perhaps you wish to know when a user is unable to add items to their shopping cart. With both these examples, you run the risk of losing revenue for your business. So having an alert set up with this condition can help bring peace of mind to both engineers as well as the exec team. We'll jump back over to Raygun and take a look how we can get something like this configured. So first I'll create our new alert. We'll give our alert a name just like before. Here I've set it to checkout flow prod shopping cart failure. Next, we'll select our applications we'd like to target. Picking the same application as before. Next, we'll set our condition to be the error group occurs condition. You can set the volume and interval to something that is appropriate for your use case. As I'm looking to configure my alert to target a specific error group and notify me as soon as Regan sees this in my application, I can achieve this to trigger when one error instance of an error occurs within a one minute time window. Now to ensure it targets the correct error group, I can add a filter. If I add a filter by tag and set this equal to shopping cart. Um, in this example, we're making use of Reagan's, Reagan's custom tags feature. However, if you prefer, you also have the option to target specific error messages instead using the same feature. Finally, we can add our notification recipients. Here I'll choose both Zing and I, and then create our alert. With our third alert in the bag, Zing, did you have some use cases um, for this one? Uh, yes, Ollie. The combination of thresholds, tags, and message makes it possible to track very specific errors that you may have seen before and might have even fixed, but it's reoccurred. So this type of alert is best for those issues that are critical in nature, but are very, very specific, uh, such as a 500 error on the signing page or an error that has prevented a customer from progressing past the shopping cart stage. I'm sure most businesses at some stage have probably experienced a very specific and nasty bug 
that has prevented the customer from performing a key function. And then the next thing you know, the management team is breathing down your neck and having something and requiring you to have something in place. So it will never happen again or be alerted as soon as it happens again. So for those sort of issues, speed of resolution is the key. And this is the alert you want to use for that. So Ali, what's the final example for today, please? For our final alert today, we're going to take a look at the page or XXR performance change condition. Software problems come in all shapes and sizes. You can use this alert to notify you when front-end performance issues are detected in your application by setting average thresholds on a range of metrics that are important to you. The metrics supported by this alert are page load time, the time it takes for users to load the entirety of your web page, first contentful paint, the time it takes for the browser to render the first bit of content on the user's screen from the DOM, largest contentful paint, the time it takes for the browser to render the largest parts of content onto a user's screen, first input delay, the time it takes for the browser to respond after a user interacts with your website, or cumulative layout shift, a user-centric metric for measuring visual stability on your web page. With that out of the way, let's jump back into Reagan and see how we can get one of these set up. Again, I'll create a new alert. We'll give our alert a name. Here I've set this to checkout flow prod, high page load times. Next, we'll choose our application. Then we'll set our condition. Here I'm going to set this to page slash SSR performance change. Then we need a metric time span and volume that is appropriate for what we're looking for. I'm looking to configure this to notify me whenever Raygun notices my average page load time to be over five seconds for a given five minute window. To achieve this, I can set the metric to be the average load time within the last five minutes is above 5,000 milliseconds. Currently, this will target all pages of my website. But say I was only interested in targeting the pricing page for people in New Zealand. I can add filters to narrow this down. First, I'll add a URI filter that is equal to the pricing page. And then I'll add a country filter that is equal to New Zealand. Lastly, I'll add the recipients and then I'll create our alert. With our final alert created, Zing, did you have any custom use cases where something like this would be useful? Yes, uh, thanks, Ollie. This alert is important for consumer based websites and apps because research has shown that if your web page takes four seconds or longer to load, about 40% of your users will not take a second look. So for e-commerce company, customers are constantly clicking between pages and comparing different items. For a streaming company, viewers are flipping through the titles using filters and doing searches about what they want to watch. And for a services company that builds website for other companies, you may have service level agreements in place for the maximum page load speed that the app must stay under. So if the experience of these every interaction is slow, then the cumulative effect is quite extreme to the business and a fast and crash-free user experience is becoming more and more important, especially for B2C businesses. For example, Amazon has calculated that a page load slowdown of just one second could cost them about $1.6 billion in sales each year. Slow page um, speed is not only bad for conversions and sales, it's also detrimental to your SEO ranking and brand awareness. Slower sites will be penalized by search engines will, and will therefore appear lower in search results than your competitors. So Oli, now that we've covered the four main alerts, as a developer, how do you act, take action if you've got one of those alerts? Awesome, taking action is made easy. Once an alert lands in your inbox, you'll be, you'll be provided with all the information required to action an alert. Here, I have an example of an alert email that's landed in my inbox recently. This includes basic alert configuration, timestamps for when the alert was triggered, affected applications and error groups with links to them inside Raygun. And you can also unsubscribe and manage the alert from links at the bottom of the page. Here I can click through to the area group in question and we'll be presented with all the information needed to start investigating the issue and implementing effects. 
I'll pass you over to Zing now to talk a bit more about the future of alerting and what's in store for this powerful new feature. So Ali, we have some ambitious plans for alerting and what we have today is just the beginning. So in the short to medium term, our roadmap for alerting includes alerts for the latest deployment. So there's no longer a need to set a particular version number. It will just happen automatically based on the latest um, deployment. We also um, are working on webhooks. So allowing um, our customers to choose a channel other than email um, to send into their in, into third party integrations. Also improving our native third party integrations as well. And finally, um, adding search and filter to the list view to help you better filter the view that you want to see. In the long term, we want to make sure that this, this, this is a key feature going forward for building customer workflows inside Reagan. Of course, we'll always welcome feedback and comments from our customers. You can email me directly at zing at reagan.com with your thoughts or by using the give feedback prompt at the bottom of the alerting to let us know. So thanks everybody. That's all we have for you today. Jamie, should we open the floor for some Q&A from the audience now? Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for that uh, talk today. I think I might have even a thing or two. Um, yeah, so if anybody has any questions about alerting, um, please feel free to put them in the chat. We actually had a couple that came through previously. Um, so I've got one actually for you, Ali. Um, mm -hmm. Someone asked, is there a limit to how many filters you can add? Cool, yeah, great question. Well, uh, most filters like country, platform, error message, and version, um, only allowed to be added once. These can be stacked together to get, provide greater granularity um, into the condition that you're looking to set up. The tags filter is the only exception, and you're allowed to add as many of these as you like. Um, so it's good to do so. Awesome. Um, and I've got one here for you, Zang. Uh, is it possible to integrate alerting with Slack? Uh very good question. Uh, Slack is one of our most popular integrations, um, so there's no surprise that customers have already been asking about how you will work with alerting. So currently, we only send notifications via email. However, Slack does have a neat little native tool called Send Emails to Slack um, that allows you to forward any alert emails directly into a Slack channel of your choice. It only takes a couple of um, minutes to set up, and you can, um, and that allows you to pick um, Slack. Um, and work with that. But you can assure that our engineering team is working hard <laughs> behind the scenes to make it possible for you to pick Slack as an alternative channel to emails in the very near future. Awesome. We've got a question here from Bernard. Um, are there plans to receive alerts by SMS or an app on the phone? Uh, not in the short term um, uh, there, um, but it, it is always something we're looking at in terms of customer feedback. So if we get more of those kind of feedback, we'll definitely look to um, investigate further. Awesome. Perfect. Well, that's it for the questions so far. So thank you very much. Uh, once again, thank you everybody for attending. We hope you found that useful. Um, yeah, any last words, Zeng, Oli? No. We'd love to for our customers to give it a try and let us know. Um, uh, your feedback really helps us to improve the product and to make uh, the workflow much better for everybody. Awesome, thank you. If you have any other follow-up questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me at jamie at raygun.com um, and I'll pass, pass on your question to the most relevant person. So once again, thank you all for coming along. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Bye everyone.